Hallie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and I am going to show you today how to make these fun beaded beads and these are using crescent beads. The crescent bead is a moon shaped bead that has two holes in it and it has a curvature to it. It almost looks like a little slice of orange or a part of the moon. So I am calling these the moonlight because they remind me of a lantern moonlight beaded beads. So the Moonlight Beaded Beads I'm going to use with some of the marbleized pyrite that we have. And this is an 8 millimeter bead that I'm going to be putting with this. And I'm just going to be making a simple stretch bracelet using 0.8 millimeter elastic. I'm also going to have some super new glue handy to tie the knot of the elastic as well as the knots on some of my beads that I'm making. The crescent beads that I'm going to be using for this project are the White Lila Luster and they have a pretty pink and goldeny sheen to them that you can see here on the beads. I've also played around with other colors too and making bigger beads or smaller beads and kind of playing around with design. So I'll mention how to do that in the video further along. For the actual beaded bead part for the moon lanterns, what we need are our crescents. I'm going to use five crescents per bead. So each bead I make, I'm going to use five of the crescents. We do sell them in a tube. And actually this tube went through the laundry because I put it in my pocket yesterday and then forgot to take it out and put that one through the laundry. Um, but So you're going to have plenty when you get a tube. You could also do a necklace design just stringing through as well. The eight OC beads, which I'm going to use in the middle of the lantern as well as on the sides, are a black hematite color. They are a check coating on a Mayuki C beads in an eight OC bead. I'm also using 11 O in the uh, C bead cinnamon line luster, and that's an 11 O C bead. And then I need a 15 O C bead that's going to be creating that little. Um, diamond shape in the middle of my moon lantern and for that I'm using the white champagne luster which is also a check coating on a Mayuki seed bead and that's a 15 O seed bead. I'm going to be working with a size 10 needle and we work with the Pony brand needle and I'm going to be using 0 .006 wildfire thread in a green color. You do see the thread a little bit because we're working with small beads when we're making it but not too too much. I'm working on a bead mat and I also have a needle nose pliers handy. These are a bent needle nose um, and that helps to flatten out my thread so that way I can thread my needle easier. Also helps to pull knots if you need to do that as well. So I'm gonna get started making a third one here so that way I can get my bracelet all made up and ready to go. So the first thing that I've done is I've cut about um, three feet because I wanna be able to do more than just one. I've cut three feet of my beading thread and I've strung that onto my size 10 needle. I'm going to start out by creating the end of the bead, which is going to be using five 11 O seed beads. I'm going to string those five 11 O seed beads onto my string and let it drop back down towards the start, I'm leaving myself about an inch. And I'm going to take my thread and needle and go back through those seed beads, going back through all five. Once I have that, I'm going to tie those two thread ends together and create a little beaded loop. You can make this bead a little bit bigger if you'd like. The one here is actually seven beads, so you can see the thickness versus the other one. Or six beads, I'm sorry, and then this one is seven, the tubular one that I was working on. That's just quite, not quite ready yet. So I have my five beads on and I've tied my knot, I'm gonna take my needle and thread through the first bead after the knot. Now I'm gonna start a peyote stitch. So I'm gonna be doing tubular peyote as the basis for this bracelet. Oops, and I realized I skipped a bead. So for this bracelet, I'm gonna be doing tubular peyote. And for the tubular peyote, we are going to be adding one more row of 11 O seed beads. So I'm gonna pick up an 11 O seed bead and add it in between each of the seed beads that I already have strung on. I'm going to make sure there's five that are added. 
Sometimes it can help if you're not familiar or if you're doing things in the round like this, if it does confuse you. You can set your beads out in little piles, that way you know exactly how many you need. And this is almost gonna create a star shape. You can see I'm just kind of holding on to the tail there, just kind of moving it out of the way. Once I'm done adding my fifth bead, I'm gonna go through that first bead on the other side of the knot, as well as the first bead that I put on in this second section. I'm gonna pull nice and tight and make sure to get rid of all that extra thread. So I have the little star shape now. When you're looking at it, it really does look like a star. Next, we're gonna go into adding our eight OC beads. Naturally, because I'm going from an 11 here to an eight, it's gonna puff it out a little bit. I'm gonna add an eight and go through the five beads on the outer edge of the star. So I'm doing a peyote stitch. So I'm adding a bead and sewing through those outer edges of those five beads. After these beads are done, you also could make a necklace with them. I think they would look pretty actually as a set of earrings hanging down. I might do that as well. They're kind of addicting. When we first got the crescents, I wasn't really sure what to do with them. Now I kind of can't stop. So I have my 8 on the last one. I'm going to go through my first 11, and I'm also going to go through that first 8 that I put on. That's how you do a step up in tubular peyote. Next, we're going to start to really see that concave shape taking place, and we're going to add another 8 in between all the 8s from the previous row. Again, adding 5 beads. Once I have my five beads added, I'm going to step up by going through that last bead as well as the first bead that was added. Give a nice tight pull and get those to have that little cupping effect. I'm gonna switch back to my 11 OC beads in that cinnamon color. And what I'm gonna do is put on two seed beads in between each of my 8O beads. This is gonna fill in that gap nicely and it's also gonna give us something to hold on to basically when we're adding our little crescents. And I'm putting two seed beads in between each one of those eight O's that were sticking up from the last row that I did. Once I get my groups on, I've gotten four on, and I'm about to put the fifth, I'm going to go through that first eight O that I was going through, as well as the first two beads that I put on. So again, we're doing that step up. Give a nice tight pull. This time when I'm coming out to 11 O's, I'm gonna create a little peak for the beads to kind of sit in. What I'm gonna do at the peak is I'm gonna add an 11 O, a 15 O, an 11 O, and then I'm gonna skip over to the next set of two. Give a nice pull and continue with your 11, 15, 11 and keep going. You're gonna go around the whole circle, adding these in place. And again, this is creating a peak for us to attach our little crescents to. The last bead that I do, I'm going to go through those two original beads that are there. I'm also gonna go through the first 11O and the first 15O that I put on. So I'm gonna be coming out of a 15O bead. So I created those little star points there with those 15Os. This is also a great way to create a bead cap if you want a bead cap to sit on a bead. So I could actually stop at this point and create some of these to go on my bracelet or on my necklace as well. 
what I'm going to do now is add in my crescent beads. So the crescent beads, you can either face them down or face them out. When you face them down, you get more of that um, tubular look to it. When you face them out, it gives it some fun variety and that's what gives that lantern look that I thought it looked like. So I am going to add my moon shaped crescents here and I'm going to do those by adding a 15 out and then my crescent. When I add my crescent, I want to make sure when I'm adding it, I'm adding it the correct way. If I add it this way, it's actually going to face down. I want to make sure that I'm adding it the correct way, that it is going to face up. If you're not sure which way that is, you can add it and then see which one it is. But if you face it downward, you can usually get that look that you need to. So it's a 15, a crescent and a 15. Then I'm going to stick over, skip over, excuse me, to the next 15 that's there. And you can see then that crescent kind of almost hangs down inside the little valley there. And I'm going to continue adding on my crescents, making sure that I'm putting them on so they will stick out. On each side of the crescent always as a 15, and I'm going to pick up the next 15. I'm going to go the whole way around adding these. And there is a little bit of variety in the crescents as far as the consistency. Um, if you notice one that's really thin or one that's really thick, just keep it out. And we're going to go ahead and add the next one here. And you can see they're just kind of falling in towards the center, which right now doesn't matter, so don't worry too much about that. There goes the fourth bead into place. And I want to kind of flip it over to make sure that they're all hanging out there in the middle. And then the fifth. When I come to the fifth bead, I want to go through that same 15-0 that the thread was coming out of originally. That'll put my last, that fifth crescent into place and give a nice tight yank on your thread. And now where I want to get to is the other side of that first crescent. I want to come out right after the crescent bead. So I went through the 15 out next to the crescent and the crescent. When I'm here at the side then, I'm going to add an, a, a 15, an 8, a 15, and then go through the same hole that I was at previously of the crescent. So I'm going to add a 15, an 8, and a 15, and again picking up the next crescent going through that same hole. So I'm not working yet with that bottom hole, that one's just kind of hanging out there. Again, on goes a 15, crescent 15. I'm sorry, 15, 8, 15, not a crescent. And through the next crescent. Making sure to give a tight pull so that way those beads kind of sit inside there. I'm going to go the whole way around, adding these in place. And once I get five in place here, I'm on the fifth. I'll show you how we do the other side. Because basically now we are done that first side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my 15-0 and out my 8-0 through the first one that we put on. When I'm out this 8-0, I'm going to start the 15-0s going through the second hole. Because what we're going to be doing is sharing the 8-0 in the middle here and creating a little X or that little lantern eye look with our 15-0s. To do that, I have my 15-0 on, I'm coming out of an 8, and I'm going to skip to the second hole of my crescents. A 15 goes on, I go through an 8, coming out the 8, another 15 goes on, and I go through the second hole of the crescent bead. If this is too quick for you, you can always slow down the settings um, in your YouTube videos. You can also pause, but I'm just going through and putting the 15s, the 8, and then the 15s back in and around. As you can see, it's creating that little lantern-y effect. And I'm going in whole way around now, creating that X. And my original design did not have a bead here in the middle, and I just skipped from one edge to the other 
and it left it kind of open so that's another idea as I just went down the side of one of my crescents but I liked the way that this looked and the way that it framed it out so now I'm back at the beginning so I have a 15 0 on I'm gonna go through the 8 through the original 15 0 that I added and out through my second hole of my crescent beam to get this to lay correctly and to stay and to get the look of the first side, what I'm going to do now is go through the second hole of the crescent bead again, but this time all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding just the 11-0 or 15-0 seed beads, I'm sorry, and going through that second hole. So I'm going to be adding three of my 15-0s and then connecting to the next crescent. I want to make sure not to go through any of the 15s that are already there. Add three more beads, go through the next crescent. You can see automatically it wants to go through one of those 15 O's. Just make sure you're not. I'm going through, adding the next ones. And we're just spinning around in a circle, adding on the three beads above the crescents. three more and I'm back to the start. When I'm at the start here, I'm gonna go through that first crescent and through the first two beads that I added of my set of three. So I'm coming out between the second and the third bead of the 15 O's that I just added. Once I'm out here, I'm going back to my 11 O's and I'm gonna add four beads in between each crescent. They're gonna go onto my needle and behind the crescent bead pick up the center bead of those three that I added and sew through it. And that's gonna create that little effect where it sits it up. Again, I'm coming out between the second and third bead of the 15 0 row before, add my four beads of my 11s, tuck the thread behind the crescent and sew through the next group of three through the center bead. You can see the effect that it's having on the inside. Again, a group of four behind the crescent and through that center bead. Continuing on through the center bead here. Push those beads to the back. I'm getting ready to add my last group of four. Once I have that group of four on my needle, I'm gonna sew back through that first 15 0 that I'm coming out of, that middle bead, sewing back through. And that's gonna be where you started putting on your four 11 0s. This way when you look at it, the peaks are kind of framed by these seed beads. It still has that star effect to it. To step up here and to continue back to my peyote stitch, I'm going to step up going through three out of the four of the 11 O's that I put on in that first set of 11 O's. So I had four there. I took my needle back through the 15 O to create the ending of those groups of four. And then I took it up the first three beads of the first group of four. I'm going to then add an 8 O on and sew through the middle two of the group of four from now on. Add an 8 -0. skip over to the next set of two middle beads, and sew through those. So I'm doing the exact same thing that we did to start, just backwards. Sewing through two beads, and adding a bead. Once I'm ready to step up, I'm going to sew through the two beads, through the first 8 that I added. And now I'm going to go around another loop, mimicking this side by adding a peyote row of 8s. So I'm going through the 8 seed beads that are there, and I'm doing peyote to add another bead in place. I'm going to then step up going through the last, the first 8 bead as well as the first 8 that I added 
And now I'm going to do a row of 11s. Again, this is just peyote stitch. If you don't know peyote stitch and you want to learn it before doing this, it's not all peyote, but it's based on peyote. You can watch some of our other YouTube videos. There's a little magnifying glass on the page, and that's going to help you to know uh, to search peyote or using the crescents or any of the beads that we use that will help you find our videos quickly once you're on our page. So I have my last 11 0 on. I'm going to go through the eight as well as the first of the five 11 0s that I just put on. I'm going to do one more peyote loop and this time I'm picking up all the 11s and adding five more 11s in between them. Continuing right along. Once I have all five in place here, I'm going to go through again doing the step up. Give a nice tight yank. Once I have that nice and tight, I'm going to take my needle and thread and go back through the last five beads that I added. And that's gonna close up that loop. Once I'm through once, you can take it around a second time if you like, but I'm also gonna knot off at this point. I wanna go underneath a warp thread, that's there. Make a loop, take my needle through the loop, and create a knot. I'm going to sew over to another portion, point in this, do the same thing, pick up an under thread, in the world of looming you say warp thread, usually I call it a thread bridge, and you're going to do a knot. Then what I'm going to do is take my super new glue here, I'm going to drop a little dab of glue onto my knot on one side and also onto my knot on the first side. Let that dry for a few moments. I'm going to take my scissors, pull on my thread, cut off my extra. Once I have, oh, it's still wet and I keep putting it down. I'm getting bead mat caught. Once I have my bead and it is dry and ready to go and doesn't have bead mat all over it, you can take your thread burner and burn that bead mat all off if you need to. I have my three little moon lanterns. What I was saying is it would look pretty as a necklace that you could add all three of these in as just a necklace display. You could also make a larger one turned in and out to do a display that way. You could decide that you wanted to continue on with me and do the stretchy bracelet, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna kind of clean up my bead mat, move some of my beads off a little bit to the side. I'm gonna keep some of these hematite ones off, but I'm gonna clean up a little bit. Once I have my area generally cleaned up, I'm gonna cut apart my strand of my marbleized pyrite, and these really are awesome new beads that I really like. And I'm going to be using these in with my stretchy string. So normally I'll use a bead stopper and I forgot to kind of get one out. So rather than stopping, I'm just going to work right on my stretchy string spool. I'm going to create a design using these. You can use a bead mat, you can use a ruler to think exactly how many beads you're going to need to do inside your design. But I'm just going to go freeform. I'm going to add three beads of this marbleized pyrite. Again, it's an eight millimeter. And I'm going to add one of my seed beads. I'm going to then go through my bead out the other side. And sometimes this might be tricky because it is hollow inside. And usually what I'll do is I'll hold it up and kind of look in the light, but I can't really do that with the camera. If you are putting it on a beading thread, it'd be much easier for you.
And I can see it stuck in there. And I'll just put it through again. And there it goes. So that's going to be my design that I'm working with. I'm going to add another one of my seed beads, three more beads, and then I'm going to continue on putting all three of my little moon lanterns on. So I got to play around a little bit with the order that I'm going to do this bracelet in. And I added five beads in place in between my little moon lanterns here. And I'm going to end my bracelet right at one of the ends of the lanterns. This is going to help when I tie my square knot of my stretchy right over left and then switch hands left over right or switch hands one or the other. When I tie my knot next to my stretchy, I can kind of hide it and disguise that knot right inside next to that bead. I'm gonna tie two, and then I'm just gonna take a little piece, or a little bit of glue, and glue down that edges, but I'll roll it on so you can see the bracelet and see it in action and in its place. So the lanterns really turned out pretty awesome. I'm excited to do a bigger design with them. I also think I wanna do some earrings with them, maybe using something below and above. I'm not quite exactly sure yet, but like I said, I've kind of gone crazy playing around with them, turning them in and out, doing the same design, playing with colors. So you can really get creative with these lantern, or with these, um, crescent beads because the crescent beads really kind of turn and twist and you know just allow for a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this video and you get a chance to get some of these awesome crescent beads and play with them. They're really fun to play up the in and out so I'll do another video for you guys that I play up that kind of version of them facing in and facing out, sitting around one another. Maybe even making them look like orange peels, who knows. Um, but I'll do that hopefully for you guys in the future. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see others, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also get regular updates on our Facebook page as well as from PotomacBeads.com. You can check out there our locations and shop at one of our actual locations, take a class, and we'd be happy to teach you some new techniques and new things. You can also go underneath the video here to show more and get links to all of the products that were used in this video in case you want to purchase any of them online if you can't get into one of our stores. As always, everybody, have fun beating, happy beating, and thanks a lot for watching.